by Charles Lear. In July of 1967, Ronnie Hill, a 14-year-old North Carolina boy, reported that he'd taken a picture of a UFO with a humanoid in front of it. According to John Keel, who wrote about the story in his article, The Little Man of North Carolina, published in the January-February 1969 Flying Saucer Review, the boy sent the picture off to Flying Saucer's UFO reports, which had just been discontinued by its publisher, Dell Publishing. The editor, Carmina Freeman, sent the picture to Keel, and he began a correspondence with Hill, which continued throughout 1968. According to Keel, Hill was agonizingly slow in responding to his letters. Keel wrote in his article that he had the photo blown up to wall size and that he and several professional photographers didn't see anything that made it seem that the figure was a doll or some other form of hoax. According to Keel, Hill was working in the family garden behind their house on July 21, 1967. Keel then presents the story in Hill's words. According to Hill, something in the air smelled like gas and caused his eyes to water. He also noticed that it was unusually quiet. He then heard a buzzing sound, and the gas smell got stronger. He caught a glimpse of something moving that looked like a black hat. He then saw a nine-feet diameter white ball-shaped object in the air. Hill said he fell down and then ran into the house to get his camera, described by Keel as a Kodak Sabi 620. When he got back, the object was on the ground. A loud noise hurt his ears, and then a humanoid about three and a half to four feet tall came out from behind the object. It had something in its hand that was shaped like a black funnel. It put it near to the ground and then lifted it up to its hip. It went back behind the object, there was a loud noise, and a bright blue flare bursted from beneath the ship. The object rose up, and the big ship reappeared. The white spherical object connected itself to a rod that pulled it into a round hole in the big ship. The big ship then took off at tremendous speed. Vincent Juan Ballister Olmos looked into this case for his UFO photocat blog, published May 28, 2012. He notes that there is an inset on page 11 of the November-December 1969 Flying Saucer Review with this update. John Keel and correspondents of his have kept a watch on this case and now report that developments have cast doubts on the authenticity of the photograph. Olmos wrote that that was the end of it in the literature for years. According to Olmos, the picture showed up on page 230 in a 1980 book by Margaret Sachs, the UFO Encyclopedia, with a caption saying that the creature has been identified as a model with an egg in the background. Almost wrote that the quote comes from the ICUFON, a New York-based UFO organization under the leadership of megalomaniac Coleman von Kavitsky. Almost points out that researcher Bob Richards used the quote in an article he wrote and had published in the April-May 1995 for Tian Times and that James Lewis used it in his 2000 book UFOs and Popular Culture. Other researchers also considered the photo to be a hoax, including Luis Ruiz Norges, who theorized in his 1996 book, 100 Photos of Extraterrestrials, that the photo was of a little model and a fake made by the typical precocious U.S. teenager. Almost provides a link to a site where the photo is displayed under the heading E.T.'s Fake. Under the photo is this caption. A teenager named Ron Hill claimed to have taken this photo of an E.T. in his backyard. In reality, the alien was a doll wrapped in aluminum foil. According to Olmos, he contacted Doug Skinner, a friend of John Keel's who manages Keel's archives and runs the site johnkeel.com, and Skinner gave him scans of the original Polaroid and the two-page letter Hill wrote and sent to Dell Publishing. Included in his list of details is this, as written, but strangest of all, there wasn't an animals around. Olmos had a consultant, Andre Duarte, examine the picture and the first discrepancy Duarte found was with the angle of the light. According to him, it should have been 75 degrees at 2 p.m., but was instead 25 degrees in the picture. Duarte also found that the craft should have appeared much larger if Hills... Available June 2022 from Flying Disc Press. A book about the people involved in the mystery. Covering the golden age of flying saucers. Using newsletters, magazines, case files, official documents, and more. Sure to leave even the diehard skeptic wandering. By Charles Lear, New York, USA. The Flying Saucer Investigators. 
available on Amazon, from June 2022. The Flying Saucer Investigators, Flying Disc Press.